Hi, I'm John Schieber uh, with TechCrunch. We're here at the World Economic Forum. I'm talking to Don Baer, who is the worldwide Hi. CEO of Burst and Marsteller. We're going to talk a little bit about um, technology and politics and campaigns. So, Don, you were, uh, you were with the, the Clinton campaign. How has uh, technology changed um, electioneering? Um, that, that was the Paleolithic age, right? <laughs> so, so what, when you look at, at, at the ways in which people, in, including um, former Secretary Clinton, approaches uh, social media and, and, um, and campaigning um, yeah. online yeah. versus the way that, that her husband did, what, what is well, the difference? Well, uh, everything's changed. I mean, the, the, because the technology and the means of reaching people and communicating back and forth have changed dramatically, as right. we know. So social media, social networks change everything. Uh, it's much more... Uh, the means of communication in, broad, in the broadcast era, right, mm -hmm. which we no longer are really in, was one to many, right? right? Now the means of communication are many to many, right? right? And so you have to learn how you're going to curate that and... Uh, get your message to the many, right. while there are many other messages coming at them and going back and forth because it's all two-way or m multiple way at right. this point. And so uh, it's, it's just a very different, it's a, a totally different dynamic. Um, and of course, it, it's because of all of that, it's much more fast-paced. You mm -hmm. know, news cycles, you know, right. you, I mean, who thinks about a news cycle anymore? You and I just had a news cycle, <laughs> right? And so... Um, uh, We're going to vine this later. Then, then so. at the, right. At the same time, <laughs> some things don't change, right? right? The way human beings absorb and sort of process and learn about information mm. and through information, some of that is uh, evergreen. Mm -hmm. um, and so what, it's really important to be able to still provide a narrative sense of what you and your campaign are about, what mm -hmm. the story is you're trying to say and tell to the people that you're trying to persuade to bring along with you. Sometimes those stories need to be articulated in different ways depending on the nature of the audience, for, some, for younger people, for right. you know, gender, what, ha what have you. And yet, there has to be a consistency to right. that story because otherwise it, it's very inauthentic. Right. So, um, and, and, and so being able to sort of bring a sense of coherence to communications and to the story that is at the heart and essence of who you are how that fits together with what the needs of the country are, mm. how all of that fits together with what you're bringing to the country in terms of solutions, um, all still is very important. But you, then you have to find the ways to sort of uh, filter it out through many, many different so ways. I, I, it seems like what you're saying is like the narrative, the overarching narrative is always the same. Like people want to have a story, a cohesive and coherent story that they're telling, and they just parse it differently for different media. Yeah. Yeah, well, and one way to think about it is we live in a fragmented age, right? Right. We, but fragmented means of communication, that's what I was describing. The, the job of political communications is still the same. It's mm. to re-aggregate the fragments right. into a coherent story. Now, y'all just did a report at Burson about the ways in which different um, technologies are being used and deployed by campaigns. What... What was the most interesting thing to you that, that you well, saw? From well, that we research? just had a study that came. We, every year we do a study called Twiplomacy. Uh -huh. And it was originally about the role that. That is the worst word I've ever It was hard to get out here right on the set. Yeah. It, uh, <laughs> but it's, it's been great. It's the ways in which, uh, in public communications, right. uh, Twitter and other social media are, are being used. Mm. So uh, that big report on an annual basis will come out in April or May of this year. Uh, but what we've done this year is to begin to put out certain parts of it so uh, early. So this year, uh, just this week, right. we put out a report about Facebook. And the fact that Facebook is the most predominant social platform uh, for governments around the world. Right. Right? I think something like 90% of the governments, only 24 governments or sort of senior leaders in governments around the world are not using Facebook in one way or another, right. of all the countries in the world. Um, so, you know, th that tells you something about the fact that that has become so predominant. And of course, right behind it are many of the other uh, platforms that Twitter. people are using. Twitter, Vine, you know, uh, everything. I mean, right. so it's Snapchat, so many different uh, uh, ways to reach everyone. Now, of course, that speaks to the whole point about political communication. Um, um, we all connect in different ways. It's right. not like I sit or anyone sits anywhere and watches one cable news network, right? Or one broadcast television news division. Right. 
Um, um, you're picking it up as you go through the day. And, and, and again, still, it, what, to me what's fascinating is, uh, coming back to this notion of re-aggregating the fragments, right. there is what I call the meta message mm. that sort of comes together through all of that. Right. And being able to understand how people pull together the meta message through the many different fragments that they're picking things up from and how to, if you will, master the meta message. Right. Have a meta message first, that's the most important right. thing, and then master the ability to continue to move it forward through different sort of means is, is critical. So, who to your mind, if you were to do sort of top five uh, meta messengers, um, messengers uh, in, in the campaign right now, in the US campaign, who would be, how would you position people? Who's well, one, one through five? I'm not going to do that because that's dangerous for me. But I, but, 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 but I'm going <laughs> to really tell you. That. But I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you uh, what I see as the most compelling meta messages coming from campaigns right now. Right, and and I would say at the moment uh, there are four that I see out there: two on uh, the Democratic Party and two on the Republican Party. So on the Republican side. Donald Trump has a meta message, right. right? In fact, Donald Trump is pretty much all meta message. It, it, yeah, right? I would say that Donald Trump is a meta message. Right? That, He's that, more of like a commentary on the fact of, or on campaigning uh, in itself. And, and on the haves versus the have-nots, yeah, yeah. and the elites versus the non-elites, yeah. and on basically the meta message is, his meta message is, you know, he talks about make America great again. That's not quite his meta message. His meta message is, you know, there's us and them, right. you know, and someone's holding us back from what we should Amazing be. Amazing that a billionaire can position himself That's as us That's been fascinating, and right? Yeah. I mean, that he, and that is one of the great uh, imponderables of this campaign, <laughs> right? There's so many imponderables in Trump's like, right. run. I anyway. think Ted Cruz is emerging with the meta message. Really? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a much more sort of conservative right wing uh, statement. Uh, it is anti-establishment. You know, and that's where you've heard now he's come after Trump right. as being a part of the establishment. So I think he's capturing that anti-establishment meta message. Um, Bernie Sanders on the Democratic side has a meta message. He's, I mean, first off, he's a socialist, right? right. So I mean, there's a meta message. That's one. Right. So Marxism is one of the big meta messages of history, right? right. And so there's Bernie Sanders sort of owning that, um, and it kind of owns him, right. you know, to use a word ownership, which doesn't fit in Marxism, but in any well, event, I yeah. mean, we, it, it, you know. But you know what I mean. I and, but his meta message is similar to, to the Trumps, Trump's right. right? I mean, I think of the same sort of thing, us versus them, we're going to get ours, you right. know. And then there's Hillary Clinton. Right. who does have a meta message. I mean, Hillary Clinton's meta message is um, it's time for change. We have to move change forward, but we have to do it effectively. She said it. I'm a progressive who likes results, right? And that's her meta message. I mean, I, it, it seems to me that, that almost like, like the, the Clinton campaign message is that I am the most adept, practical, and, and competent candidate. And, and that's the message. But how persuasive is that to an American polity that really doesn't... So here's you know. another way to think about what her meta message is. Okay. I'm the grown-up leadership during right. a time when we really need it. Yeah, but, but I, I mean, don't so people is that, just want to get a beer with their president at this point? Yeah, like, see, I think that they may think that's what they want today, right this second. But if they pause a minute and think about we're facing enormous challenges in the world, we're enormous challenges in our country, we can't fool around with this, mm -hmm. right? We cannot. We have to get going towards... We, we need someone who can get the job done. Right. And I think that's her meta message, is pick someone who can get the job done. Because we can't afford to keep not getting the job done. Right. So you are um, you're the CEO of a, a global public relations firm. If you were to craft the message for, for a candidate, what, what would your message to, to sort of the American uh, public be? I, it would be very close to what I just said about Hillary Clinton, okay. right? If I think about where the country is. First off, I wouldn't make it make America great again. Why? Because I think that's an insult to Americans. I think Americans are great. I think Americans at every level are doing great things every day, mm -hmm. right? Truthfully, um, we need to make America grow again, right? We need economic growth that is sustainable, and it needs to be, Hillary Clinton has called it, a growth and fairness economic agenda, right? We need to be both grow and find a way to share that adequately across every, you know, all sectors. Um, so to me, it's about make America grow, uh, and it's about, you know, let's get the job done right. together. Right. So I, 
last question. But it, can, I, can I just add on that? No, no, please, go ahead. People, despite, just as I talked about fragmentation and how we approach media yeah. and how we approach communications, we are a deeply fragmented country, mm -hmm. right? And people actually crave somehow or another being a, able to re-aggregate those fragments into something that is, excuse me for using this phrase, we the people again, right? right? Well, I, I mean, I think that there, there's definitely a sense that, that um, the country has become so polarized that there's an inability to actually move forward with, with any sort of policy that, that, that can help the country. Right. I, I, there's, there's a sense of gridlock in Washington that's very real, it seems. Um, if you were to think about which candidate or, or who has been the most adept at using technology to, to get their message across, to, to tell their story, who would, you, who would be the best? In this campaign, I think it's too early to say, because I think they're, they've all learned a lot from the last sort of couple of cycles. I mean, it, it, we know that in 2008, Barack Obama and the Obama campaign were... Crushed it, they, yeah. Well, they were pioneering, not just in how they got their message out, because in fact, think about it, eight years ago, a lot of yeah. social networks were in their infancy at that point, right. including Facebook. Right. But, um, but it, it, so it wasn't so much that as it was using data to understand who their voters were, who their persuadable voters were, how to go out and appeal to them, and then on election day, and in the run up to election day, yeah. go out, find them, pull them out of whatever they were doing and get them to vote. Yeah. That's, that's technology too, which is critically important in all of this. How do we identify, how do we target, and how do we uh, motivate the voters that matter? And with that, sir, I think, I think we're done. Um, it is so much a pleasure to talk to you. This is fascinating. Same here. Thanks. And I really enjoyed it. Thank so you. So thank you so much. Great. Cheers. Take care. Much. Great. Cheers. Take care.